Hello and welcome to the in-news series of Drishti IAS. I am Pooja Divedi and in this segment today we are going to discuss about Razakar. We will holistically cover their role in the Bangladesh Liberation War of 1971. We will also discuss is there any difference between them, the Razakars of the Bangladesh War and the Razakars of Hyderabad and then we will also come up to the conclusion about their status post the war. Okay. So let us follow this particular route from the news to what about the International Crimes Tribunal. This has been established by the Bangladesh government. It is not something like an international organization, but something to do with uh, the enactment of those laws which are concerned with international war crimes. And the 1971 war, that is of course the Bangladesh Liberation War, who were the Razakars? What about their role in the war? And are they any different from the Razakars of Hyderabad? And what happened to the Razakars after the 1971 war? Also, we will uh, give you a question that is mains based. So, why are we discussing about Razakars? Because six members of the Razakar Bahini sentenced to death in Bangladesh for crimes against humanity against the 1971 Bangladesh Liberation War. And this is of special significance because it has to do with the geopolitical situation of Southeast Asia and South Asia because of the 1971 war basically it put a new country on map in South Asia that was of course Bangladesh. Moving on, let us talk about the International Crimes Tribunal. What is it? It is basically a temporary or a permanent court which has been convened for a purpose. The purpose has to be resolving disputes or cases arising under the international criminal law. And of course, the current International Crimes Tribunal had tried in Bangladesh, which was actually formed in the year 2010. Okay, It was done in order to try the infamous paramilitary forces Razakar Bahini for their alleged crimes against humanity the crimes were almost equivalent to a genocide. Also, Justice Muhammad Shahinur Islam, he headed the tribunal. It was a three-member tribunal. And they, he said that they shall be hanged by neck until their death. Okay, the first ever person or the first ever person, if we have to talk about who was tried under the uh, Tribunal Act was uh, Bachu Razakar. Abul Kalam Azad, remember that, Abul Kalam Azad or Bachu Razakar, okay, and he was tried in absentia in the year 2013, he was the first ever person to be tried and convicted under the act. Moving on, let us talk about a bit in uh, brief, we can say, the history about the liberation war. Now you see, this is a map which shows us the status of India at the time of independence, 15th August 1957, India got its independence. And it was a country which was very different from a country that we see today because the back then Hyderabad was did not want to become a part of India. There were many clamors for becoming an independent state because of the Nizam. Then, of course, if we talk about Kashmir, Kashmir wanted to remain independent, wanted certain time to think about if it should get annexed to India or Pakistan. And of course, India was very open about conducting a plebiscite over there with respect to which country Kashmir wants to join. But Pakistan was very desperate in getting Kashmir into its own territory. So they waged war against Kashmir. And then what happened? Instrument of accession was signed between Maharaja Hari Singh and India. And then Kashmir became a part of India. Then as we see, if we talk about East Pakistan, back then when in 1947 India got independence, it came at a price that was of course the uh, the entire situation of partition was there so east pakistan and west pakistan these both regions were not only geographically distinct and different but also culturally and of course they have a different they had a different culture and also a different ideology and west pakistan was not happy this differentiation of east pakistan on the basis not only of geography but cultural and ideological. So what happened that Bengal ethnic concerns, it started to occur. 
with respect to a desire for local political control and self rule and also the right to use bengali language because although uh, the religious sentiments were equivalent to pakistan but if we talk about cultural homogeneity it was much more to do with uh, west bengal the region of west bengal bihar odisha so cultural differences also arose and finally when we talk about uh, the you can say the sowing of seeds with respect to autonomy of east pakistan it was laid by mujibur uh, mujibur rahman who wanted more autonomy for east pakistan and it wasn't it wasn't very well going down with certain people like yahya khan and also the bhuttos so it was seen that his decision for more autonomy to uh, east pakistan was countered by yahya khan okay so what happened after that that march 25 1971 pakistan now pakistan was not happy with how things were moving the negotiations were moving with respect to getting autonomy for bangladesh now bangladesh so they started doing policy of reprisal targeting supporters of bangladesh liberation and also the perceived enemies of the state which were the minority hindus in east pakistan now bangladesh so they also ensured that presence of fighter jets tanks and napalm is also present it's a sticky liquid which is very flammable it's used in bombs and they also started creating radical religious militias in order to systematically murder and deport the populace which were having sentiments for autonomy with bangladesh and now radical religious militias can be seen as razakars then we also had mukti bahini which was getting a lot of support from indian side with respect to the autonomy of east pakistan okay so they were often engaged in guerrilla operations in east pakistan from bases on the indian side of the border now after the situation got very disrupted in bangladesh what happened 15 million refugees started crossing into india's territory then indira gandhi took the decision of intervening into the matter on purely humanitarian basis because there were ongoing humanitarian crises that were actually inf uh, inflicting damage upon our internal security right and then comes the man who led the 1971 liberation war sam manik shaw he played a pivotal role in ensuring that there is unconditional surrender from the pakistani army and it happened all right and then of course when uh, when pakistan it wanted to preempt basically it wanted to preempt india's support of east pakistan now bangladesh so what did it do it did the huge mistake of attacking india from west pakistan on december 3rd and then rest is history although we are discussing it now the war became a flash point after that it didn't go for long pakistani army surrendered unconditionally but the war became a flash point within the wider cold war why because usa became insecure that if india wins in this war what will happen this because of course we had very good relations with russia back then as well so it wanted to ensure that soviet union or of course back then it was known as soviet union it was known as ussr ussr should not have um, you know aims and ambitions in south asia so it did everything it could usa did everything it could to betray pakistan in the entire war even sending aircraft carrier enterprise in order to block india's efforts which of course did not go well and then in 1973 international crimes tribunal act was enacted also the 2009 international crimes tribunal amendment act was enacted and by 1975 some 752 people had been convicted and imprisoned in this the 2009 act and 1973 act uh, are responsible for the international crimes tribunal to be formed moving on now let's talk about who are the razakars these are auxiliary very infamous paramilitary forces and they helped the pakistani army in the 1971 war it was composed of pro pakistani bengalis and biharis from bangladesh which was formerly east pakistan and it consisted of urdu speaking bihari muslims and religious parties that opposed the separation of east and west pakistan this party jamaat e islami al badr and al shams these are the many influential parties that had given support to 
the Razakars. Moving on. Now, if we talk about the role, 50,000 Razakars assisted the army in raids against the local population and were accused of committing horrific atrocities. Razakar basically means volunteer or helper in Persian and Urdu. But in Bangladesh, it connotes a very different meaning, like a sign of betrayal or a collaborator. Even according to an anthropologist Nayanika, it is used as an abuse in Bangladesh. This is the basic, you, you can say, the underlying meaning of Razakar in Bangladesh. You can understand how horrified the Bangladeshis must be if they are using certain word which is notifying volunteer or helper as an abuse. Now, death toll. If we are talking about death toll, these are basically very contested in nature. Not a proper record has been formulated for them. But death toll because of the Pakistan army, Pakistani army and the Razakas, death toll pegged at anywhere from 3 lakh to 3 million. That means 3 lakh to 30 uh, lakh. Rape of 100,000 to 400,000 women, 25,000 to 195,000 forced pregnancies also took place because of their atrocities. And of course, as I tell you that memories of Razakars are still contested. Okay, by Pakistan never acknowledged that they use Razakars as allied forces. Now, in uh, basically, if we compare them to the Hyderabad Razakar, it happens so that there are four types of Razakars. First type were volunteers who came forward to defend Hyderabad in case inadequacies were there in the Hyderabad military. Second were Hindu personnel who were recruited for the purpose by Hindu Deshmukhs and Zamindars to curry favor with the Nizam. Then comes the irregular militias called the Razakars. Also, another type of Razakars were home guards and reserved constabulary of bordering districts of Hyderabad and they used to do nightly raids in Hyderabad. So, the you can say the con concerted activities of Razakars in Hyderabad uh, were pretty horrifying for the people in Hyderabad. So, what happened? Uh, this, whatever I am going to read over here is basically uh, the reply that Jawaharlal Nehru received from Sardar uh, Vallabhai Patel uh, at the prompting of Padmada, Padmaja Naidu in 1950. So, he said, Sardar Vallabhai Patel said, out of 15,654 Razakars in jail, 15,642 has had been released and the remaining 12 were reported the dangerous type and stated out that more than 2,000, out of more than 2,000 other category of Razakars originally arrested for various atrocities. Now, 340 were tried and sentenced to various terms including death by special tribunals and the rest were released or discharged without being put on trial. So, you can see how, um, if we talk about the memories of Razakar in Hyderabad, it is also very disturbing. Let us move on. Although they were not, of course, the same, Razakars were a term to, you, uh, to use for people who are volunteering or helping, right? Now, what happened to the Razakars after the 1971 war? Of course, tribunals were created to try them. And uh, after the Awami League won elections in Bangladesh, what happened? That they banned organizations which helped Razakars. And 37,000 collaborators were identified, 26,000 were granted general amnesty in November 1973 by the government. Also, the remaining were sentenced to different terms of punishment or remained on trial. On the, and the first person I told you who, were, who was convicted in 2013, he was charged with eight charges, different charges. And rape was also there, murder was also there, robbery was also there. Now, after Mujibur Rahman was assassinated in 1975 by a certain section of the army, what happened? Uh, other people took over the... Uh, the administration of Bangladesh and alleged war criminals, they gained important positions in the government. Like during the period of military rule between 1975 to 1990, General Ziaur Rahman became the de facto head of the state, repealed the Collaborators Act and released the remaining people who were in prison, prison who were facing different charges. And the jamaat -e islami allied with the BNP. After their return to the country and its leaders served as cabinet ministers, this was the, they got very important positions in the government after 1975. Moving on, now in this, the current situation about the Razakas is such that they are being tried. Their story, although remains contested by the Pakistani army, the general administration of Pakistan, but of course the 
situation remains grim in terms of the history of Razakars. Now, let us talk about a question, who were the Razakars and discuss their role in the 1971 Liberation War in 250 words. Okay, so that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Stay updated, stay engaged.